This is Shannon McGuire at Book Expo America 2011. Sean, can you tell me how someone can have both a machete collection and the doll collection? So, if you want to any girls' cartoons from the 1980s, My Little Pony, Care Bears, any of that, you will quickly come to realize that all of the censors were so busy making sure that G.I. Joe didn't shoot anybody that they let anything take get away with murder. <laughs> the My Little Pony is like Gorman Gas with books. And between that and my absolute passionate love of the monsters and desire to grow up to be Marilyn Munster, I think a large toy collection and a large siege weaponry collection pretty much go hand in hand. So you, you have reappropriated pink for the goth set, is that it? Essentially. I'm less goth than cheerfully homicidal. <laughs> Now, you tell us a little bit about Deadline coming out May 31st, I believe. Yep. This is book two. It was a big, shocking ending to Speed. So how do you how do you continue the series after such a big revelation at the end, which I'm trying not to spoil? Well, after the big thing happens in Speed, there's some switching up in the primary, you know, focus of the book. And it's that switched focus that maintains through most of Deadline. So at the beginning of Deadline, our point of view character is almost entirely without a purpose. They're just kind of drifting. They're not really sure how to deal with themselves or how to deal with the world. Unfortunately, this is not going to keep the world from bringing the dealings of Georgia. So, uh, if Steve was kind of a political science fiction thriller, this is a medical science fiction thriller. So, we go a lot deeper into the science behind Kellis Amberley, the science behind the zombies, and exactly what it would take to create a virus that somehow didn't mutate for 20 years. Oh, I love, I'm such a science nerd. So, were you once again spending quality time on the phone with the CDC. I was once again spending quality time on the phone with the CDC. We think that the NSA probably monitors my phone right now. <laughs> so I'm their equivalent of Comedy Central. <laughs> oh, the one girl's talking about MRSA again. Get the popcorn. <laughs> so are you basically the person to go to? If there's a zombie attack, we all just run for your house and hide? No, because I'll start shooting you as soon as you get within 20 yards. Uh, just, just saying, if there's a large mob of strangers coming after the zombies have started showing up, I'm not necessarily going to be the most charitable. Um, but I am a good person to ask if I think the zombie apocalypse has started during the early stages. Now, my answer may be no, it's a tapeworm apocalypse or a melting bacteria apocalypse, but I can at least tell you it's not zombie. <laughs> so how close, in terms of the science scientific research that you've done, how close is your scenario to something that has happened or could happen in real life? We have never actually had a genetically modified virus get loose. That is, thank God, thus far, completely fictional. But we have had lab accidents. We have had things that were released ahead of time. Uh, recently, in the news, you can actually see kind of a mirror of how the Kellis cure got released in the atmosphere, in that an old scientific article about a, a bullet, magic bullet cure for cancer, got dug up and the media started talking again about, oh, big pharma is trying to repress this. They're not even into clinical trials yet. They are so, so early in the research of this particular cure that we don't know yet if it'll cure you and then kill you five years later. So to put it out there as it's a magic bullet and they just won't share is irresponsible journalism. Uh, and we are now starting to use tailored viruses that we've changed around to do things we think would be better for us than what they do naturally. So, you know, who knows? Give us another 10 years and we too could be immune to cancer and the common cold and death. <laughs> Exactly, fair trade off. But no. Interesting. So, can you tell us a little bit about what other projects you have coming up? One Salt Sea is coming up, the encrypted. Well, One Salt Sea is the fifth book in the October Day series. Uh, they are kind of standalone, but I really, really recommend starting from the beginning just because things do build one on the other. This one comes after late eclipses. Uh, Toby has been put in the position of actually being in charge of a group of other faiths for the first time in her life. She's not too hot on that. And there are mermaids involved. And since she's hydrophobic, She's the happiest changeling ever. <laughs> uh, and then Just Can Armageddon, which is coming out in March, is my, my new series, Encrypted. And that's kind of Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets the Crocodile Hunter. It's a family of cryptozoologists who are working to both protect the cryptids of the world from mankind and to protect mankind from the cryptids of the world. So how much is this a different school, an entirely different school of scientific research that you had to do at a whole other level of... I've been doing a field. Guide, um, <laughs> which involves the taxonomic classification of all the different forms of cryptid and coming up with biological justifications. Uh, for about six months, my favorite pop quiz was what makes a mammal. Because all you need is hair. If you have hair, you can be cold-blooded, lay eggs, and sweat milk through your arm.
some pits and you're still a mammal. And you have to breathe air, I think, don't you? Uh, no, that is not actually considered one of the mandatory requirements. Thus far, we haven't found any, any non-air breathing mammals, but it's not on the list. Air <laughs> is it. Uh, so the science is, is fabulous, but mostly this is more into the into the urban fantasy side, version of paranormal romance, actually. I say it's my seriousness scale. The Mira Grant stuff is a 10. I walk away from those books kind of shaking, and I need a week at Disney World. Uh, the Toby stuff is a 6 or a 7. They're, they're good, they're fun, but they're occasionally depressing. And then he puts it to kick you in the head. In a good way. In a good way. It has talking mice. I'm happy. Now, are we ever going to see a science fiction space opera odyssey from you at some point, or are you firmly... I am working on a YA series about a generation shift, so... Nice. Um, eventually. I, I am not very good at not going into genres, especially when people say, gosh, you'll never write a romantic comedy. Oh, give me 20 minutes. <laughs> Here, stop chasing St. Margaret's, 120,000 words long. Enjoy. So... Are you a workaholic? I am. <laughs> I was somehow getting that impression from you. Now what, do you have any preparations done for if we do have the zombie apocalypse? Do you have, we all have our earthquake kits in California, but do you have your zombie, your machete set aside and sharpened just for zombie heads? I, I, so I have my zombie kit, uh, because the CDC was right when they recently put out their zombie preparedness plan, that if you, if you put it that way, it's more fun, and you're more likely to take it seriously, weirdly enough, than if you're putting together your earthquake kit. So I've got my machete and my baseball bat and my MREs and my water purification tablets and, you know, all that fun stuff. And hopefully I'll never have to use it. Does all of this research for this series to turn you into a hypochondriac? I mean, do you start... No, but it makes me the worst dinner conversation ever. <laughs> because I seriously will be eating and go, wow, you know what this was on here reminds me of? Subdermal maggot. And I'll start telling you about it. And it's... The little switch in my brain that is supposed to keep me from noticing that I'm revolting everyone around me is supposed to you know, make me go, hey, maybe not. That, I broke it. It snapped off somewhere around the age of autopsy. So. so I'm guessing you're not going to be writing a middle grade series? No, I'm challenging you now, so you oh, probably will. Thanks, thanks for that. That was awesome. I would love one. That's what I'm saying. And unicorns. That's all I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much for taking the time. No problem. And deadline comes out May 31st. Thank you. You have a nice time on. <laughs>